It happened on July 12, 1984, at a chemical plant in Togliati, an industrial city in central Russia, which some of you might know as the home of Russia's largest car manufacturer. The chemical plant, obscurely named Kuyubyshev Phosphor, was built in the Soviet era to produce phosphate fertilizers, orthophosphoric acid, and synthetic detergents, and was the largest of the kind in the former USSR. On that day, a team which carried out a routine radiological monitoring procedure, including checking the state of radioactive level gauges, found out that one of the cesium-137 radioactive sources was missing in a phosphate ore calcination workshop. At the same time, two sections of the workshop, a fitting shop and the lockers in the men's locker room, were found to be contaminated with radiation. All the emergency services of the region were immediately alerted of the incident, and even KGB agents were involved in the investigation that followed. The protagonists of the story are Shamil Yafisov and Mikhail Melnikov, two 17-year-old students at the local trade school. In 1983, they underwent practical training at the plant. One of the workers decided to crack a joke and told them that a radioactive level gauge installed on a product pipeline contained expensive radio components, which could be fenced at a pretty hefty profit. The idea to get easy money, as bad luck would have it, found fertile ground. So, one nice day, they discreetly climbed onto the product pipeline, opened the lead case, of course it was marked with a radiation sign, but they didn't notice, removed a metal cylinder filled with a radioisotope, reattached the seal to the empty case, and put it back carefully. That's why it took a year to find out that the radioactive source was missing. The thieves went to a fitting shop where they tried to break open the metal cylinder using a hammer, but the container was strong enough to resist their attempts, so they sawed it with a hacksaw, ignoring how dangerous the contents could be. To their disappointment, they found no radio components. Instead, the cylinder turned out to be filled with some gray powder. The underwhelmed boys just threw the open source into a corner of the shop, brushed off the table, and wiped their hands. One of the trainees even used his own pants. They didn't know that the mysterious gray powder was actually cesium-137. For over a year, those who worked at the fitting shop spread the radioactive powder all over the plant on the soles of their shoes. The situation was made worse by the fact that garbage and dust from cleanings routinely ended up on the grass just steps away from the workshop gate. Even a year later, radiation levels in the area ranged from 0.2 to 1.5 millirenkin per hour, which means they were from 100 to 1,000 times above natural radiation background. And for those of you who are not yet impressed, there were lockers and some points in the ill-fated fitting shop where radiological rentkins were up to one rentkin per hour. The thieves were found pretty quickly. Investigators sent requests to local hospitals to provide information about patients that showed any suspicious symptoms. Almost immediately, doctors informed them about two former trainees. As it turned out, they developed sores and red swellings on their hands just a few days after the theft, while one of them developed a radiation burn on his hip where he had wiped his hands. When asked by a doctor about the reason for those symptoms, they described them as chemical burns received during their practical training. By the time the young perpetrators were identified, they were already in the army, so it was too late to arrest them. They were classified as fit for military service by a medical board at a local military registration and enlistment office. But both were discharged on medical grounds after they developed radiation sickness. Then they went through a lengthy treatment and finally received a third-degree disability certification. Out of 90 workers at the plant, 20 received varying doses of radiation, but none of them developed severe radiation poisoning symptoms. Cesium-137 is excreted quickly due to the relatively fast regeneration of the soft tissues where it concentrates, so the lives and health of the workers were not in danger. Decontamination of the premises, along with the burial of the radioactive waste, took several months. Cleanup workers from a specialized radioactive disposal facility named Radon removed the contaminated soil partly removed workbenches, metal ladders, and surfaces of the workshop to transport them to radioactive waste storage. The former fitting shop itself was filled up to the ceiling with concrete, and so it stands today.